You know, sometimes I think to myself, I think I would like to live in the days of Little House on the Prairie. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. And I could go shopping at down at Mrs. Olson's, you know, and get some lace to make curtains for my cute little homestead. Mm -hmm. And I could make supper on my little black cook stove, just like Ma did. Make me an apron. Yes, I think that should be the life for me. And then I could bake bread. Not that Walnut Grove didn't have its downsides, I guess. You know, they had to use them outhouses. I wouldn't like to have to go outside at night to use the bathroom. Well, that would suck. What else? Uh, oh, no air conditioning. That'd be a biggie. Yep. No air conditioning. So I imagine baking that bread in the heat. Sweat. Yeah, one second thought. I think I'll just uh, pretend I live in a farmhouse. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And before we get started, I would like to ask if you would kindly hit that subscribe button. I need some more subscribers, please. And now for our first DIY today. These are Dollar Tree DIYs that I'm doing. And the first thing is not a Dollar Tree item. It is actually a 70% off flower pick. I got a Joanne Fabric Fabrics. You'll need a hot glue gun and these decorative wooden blocks from Dollar Tree. I didn't have all three the same, but that's okay. They're the same size. Kills chalk paint, a sponge brush, a Sharpie, pen. Um, I like to use the one with the fine point. You'll need a printout that says our happy place, a regular pen, and a pencil. And the first step is to remove the little decorations off of the decorative blocks. This Autumn Blessings sign has glitter on it and if I were going to paint over it and it would be something showing the front of, I would have sanded that glitter off so that it wouldn't show through the paint. But since these blocks are going to be layered, some of them aren't going to be showing their fronts anyway, so I didn't sand the glitter off. You'll want to paint two coats onto all of your blocks, all the sides. I didn't do the insides and then take some sandpaper and rough up the edges. The next step is to use your trusty hot glue gun. Make sure it's working properly. Mine's been on the fritz lately. I don't know what its problem is. And put a line of glue around every side. Why am I talking so slow? <laughs> Every side of the block. And then just plunker right down on top of your bottom layer block. And then you'll repeat this process on the next block. And our little printout, you could of course use your Cricut to make your letters, but I chose to do it this way today. And the font is New Courier, and I believe it was, the size was 48. So just take your pencil. I didn't, I searched the house over. I didn't have a regular pencil, can you believe that? So I just used a black colored pencil. And then I filled in the backs of the words really dark as you see I'm doing here, and then they will transfer nicely 
as a, well, I shouldn't say nicely. I, they transfer enough onto these little fake books that we can trace. So I'm getting my regular pen to trace our letters onto the little blocks. And this was just a little bit tricky. I had to do it upside down because I needed a place for my writing hand to rest on so that I could not have such a shaky hand trying to trace these letters out. Um, but anyway, you'll see it works. Ta-da, ain't that cool? Okay, now we take our fine point Sharpie pen and we just trace over the letters that we just made. And again, I should have done it upside down so that the edge of my hand wouldn't have been off of the block. I could have had better writing if I would. I think about it in here in a second, you'll see I turned it around, but I should have done it for all the letters. Actually, what I did was, <laughs> When I turned it upside down, I decided maybe I wanted the lines just a little thicker. So I actually went over and traced these letters twice. I took the jute string or twine, whatever you prefer to call it, and wrapped it around the stack of books three times. And I made sure that the twine was kind of haphazardly. I like that look where it's not all just in a line. You know, the lines are crossing each other. Anyway, you, you get the picture. And then I tied a knot on the top and cut the ends. And the piece that brings this whole craft together is the beautiful floral pick that I got from Joanne Fabric for 70% off. It was originally only $3.99 to start with, so do the math. I don't know. It was cheap. I got a whole bag full of them. So I just tucked that little pick down inside one of the jute strings, made sure that the flowers weren't covering up my words that I had traced and you could just leave it like that I think it'd be fine but I felt like hot gluing it down just to make sure it stays where I tell it to stay. Yep I'm in love. I love 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 this. For craft number two, you'll need all these items that you see here. And it's pretty simple. Just remove the tag off of the back of the house that I got from Dollar Tree. It was being stubborn, so here's a tip. Use your hot, hot, your hot dryer, your hair dryer. Mine gets extremely hot. Use your hair dryer to kind of melt that sticky away. Then use your, using your white chalk paint, uh, you'll want to paint, I'm not going to lie to you, people, it took three to four coats to cover. And I thought, yeah, I might would need some extra coats on this design on the bottom. But that wasn't even the whole, the whole thing. The whole, the raw wood that I thought would only take two coats max, it took about four coats too. Anyway, it's a small piece, so it really didn't take too much time. And I used my hair dryer in between coats to speed up the drying time. Once that whole painting process was over with, on to the fun part. These pretty rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I love them. I love them so much. I've never used them before, and so I was excited to try them. I couldn't even believe how well they worked. 
Um, just read the instructions on the back. It's really plain and simple. You just cut out your design that you're wanting to use, which I went with the big wreath in the middle. Before I peeled the backing off, I laid it down to decide exactly where the placement should be. And then you just peel the back off, as you see I'm doing here. And it's not sticky, but I would be careful, you know, trying not to rub off too much of the back while you're doing this and once you put it down you can move it it doesn't like stick down right there I could still move it at this point but I liked where it was so then I just took my Kroger card um, to burnish it down onto the project And here comes the big reveal. Ah, that is so satisfying. Oh, I could just, I could put these rub-on transfers all over everything. I love them. And this piece I wanted to match the little stack of fake books, so I distressed around the edges of this little house too. This is totally optional. I thought it looked fine, just white, crisp, clean, white, new, and with that green little wreath in the middle. It was beautiful the way it was, but like I said, I wanted it to match, so I roughed up the edges on the little house. In the same way that I wrapped the jute string around the little stack of books, I did the very same thing at, on the bottom of the house. Uh, only The only difference is instead of just tying a knot and cutting the ends, I went ahead and made a bow just because I thought it would look better. But you could totally make a bow out of ribbon, you could put some words in here, possibilities are endless. But I was going for simple, so I hot glued my bow in place because I wanted to get a little wonky. I have that sometimes, and <laughs> it still wanted to be contrary, but, but that's fine. Project number two is all done. The third project, you will need all the little items that you see here. The star of the show is this salt and pepper shaker that I got from Dollar Tree. And you'll need some sandpaper. I like my moss colored Waverly chalk paint, but any color that you wanna paint these salt and pepper shakers would be fine. And this bush came from the Dollar General store. They were recently on sale. I hope you caught that sale. Sandpaper, a brush, jute twine, and a pair of wire cutters for cutting your stems. So the first thing is to unscrew the lids off of these salt and pepper shakers and begin to paint them with the chalk paint. Now, I really thought that I was going to be using the lids. I thought that I would screw them back on in the end. That's why I'm not, you won't see me paint um, the tops of the jars just because I wanted the lids to be able to screw back on without getting all snaggled up in the paint but my plans got foiled I thought that I could stick the flowers down in the holes of the lids but 
you just can't get something to fit into those little holes <laughs> so I, I did I played around with it I even stripped the plastic off of the flowers stems and got them just down to the wires and they did fit down in the holes but they didn't want to stand upright then they had not enough support to stand upright so I did away with the lids and so that's the explanation for why I'm not painting the tops but if I had it to do over again I probably would paint the tops of these little salt and pepper shakers too. After I did two coats of the chalk paint, I went in with sandpaper and very, very lightly distressed the little bumps and grooves of these salt and pepper shakers. And you could, it came off so easily, you could use the wet distressing method. If you've ever heard of that, that works. I've done that before too. And it's just where you take a wet rag and you can wipe over some of your paint and it will distress just the same as with sandpaper, isn't that cool? Seems like the running theme for decorations in this video is jute string, but I love jute string, so that's fine. So I took the jute string and wrapped around the top. This is why I should have painted the top. I felt like every piece of that bare glass needed to be covered. There is a good spot where I should have put some hot glue because you see that it wanted to pop back off the top. Anyway, wrap and wrap and wrap and then tie you a little bow right onto the front. When you get your jute string just right, then you can put your flowers down inside and this project is done. These were the most fun to make. Thank you all so much for watching. Check me out over on Instagram, Pinterest, and my blog, thedistressedprincess.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Bye for now.